Welcome to the Toomey Stock Market Report, and I'm James Toomey, and today is Thursday, January 26, 2023. Markets just closed, and we've got some important updates to provide you with and help you with understanding the stock market and what's starting to develop, what's red hot. So let's go right to it. What do we have here? Well, we're going to go over a couple of quick things here, and what I'd like to do is first kind of give you a highlight of, of course, go to toomeystocks.com. That's the number two, meestocks.com. There you'll see our most recent newsletter. Click on, you'll be able to get it. It's 21 pages of fundamentals and technical analysis, help you understand what's happening in the market, in the industries, and what we keep our eyes on, both fundamentally and technically. It could help you with your trading as well. Uh, let's see. Today, the SPY tested you know, again, the 200 EMA staying above it again, which is very nice to see. Interesting enough, the RSI has now climbed to 63.1. The NASDAQ RSI, more disturbingly, is 66.5. Most people say the market's overbought when it gets into the 70 range. Once it goes over 65, my antenna goes up, and I start looking at that as a potential pullback is on its way. Diamond is holding. And the diamond is our proxy for the Dow Jones, and that is um, in the 50s, low 50s, mid 50s. What's more interesting is the advanced decline RSI is still elevated up at 72. So let's start there first. Let's the advanced decline. Let's see if we can get to that. Uh, where is that here on our list? Okay, so as of yesterday's close, the advanced decline. You know, it's it it is nice because we're we're getting more stocks participate in this advance, right? As and more stocks advance price wise, this line is going to go upward. Last time it's crossed above the two hundred the fifty EMA, the two hundred EMA, and the fifty EMA, which is in blue. We've eclipsed the last high that we had here, and then we're we're getting back into nearing uh, the the the. First stopping point from August, last August's downdraft to the bear market, and we tried to regain price on there, and then it just went right to the bottom. What's interesting, if you look up here, RSI 72. Last time we were up in that territory, I graded it, you put it in gray here. Uh, that was the height of the bear market, <clears throat> and sure enough, it couldn't sustain that. Now, what we always say when we trade things like the 200% uh, TBT, the short of the bonds, or even TLT to some extent, or something like Tesla or Apple, where there's tr always buyers and they keep it elevated. You can, and people aren't really selling, they're just holding, tends to be RSIs can be elevated for some period of time, generally in a more stable stock price market. The difference here. The New York Stock Exchange is a plethora of stocks, so it ha this carries more weight when the RSI is up there. I look this as a bigger picture. So my antenna is up. You know, it did, has flattened out this week. So we'll see where this goes, but we, we are uh, showing definitely some concern, okay? Uh, as I said, what we want to do is look at the charts. If we look at, we're going to start with the diamonds first, Okay. As you can tell, we've we've got a held serve above the 50 EMA, which is nice. And now, whoops, I'm getting this to uh, give me a little bit of, whoops, wait for program to respond. Okay, so we're looking at, uh, well, I think we're going to see, let me pull this back a little bit. This 9 and 14 EMA is starting to flatten out, but it's now above where it's been the last three days. Uh, sure, we've, the volume is decreasing. Yes, the 50 EMA for the past week, uh, four days have held. Now the nine is holding very positive. Uh, this declining cone here is not one of my favorites because what happens, you got we come up higher highs, lower lows. You get to a point where you get this high and then you come back, hit a low. You go back up and there's a less, a lower high. And then you come back and hit a low low. It did not. We did not go to a low low, but we actually, this is very short term now because it's a daily chart. We did break above the last high. So it's very promising. Um, this, the the uh, MACD is improving. It had been getting down towards zero, but it is still positive 0.95. Green still 
um, near the red. But, uh, you know, so it definitely had weakened. Uh, the stochastic, which is a short-term indicator, is still indicating, even though it's down at 70, it's still indicating, you know, positive movement. But it was tiring, and now it's getting a little bit of a rebound. That's a good sign. But if we go to the SPY, SPY, that's our proxy for the S&P. This is the one I was talking about. If you go all the way back, we've talked about this in all our updates, how it's in the negative, uh, in the bear market downtrend area. And now we've gotten up around that 200. But, you know, anytime we've been up at the 200, it briefly stays up here. And you can see here back in, you know, the last bear market rally. And it, and it just gives it price up. And then we start escalating down to new lows. But t and today, what do we do? We got the RSI at 63.1. Uh, you know, it's getting tired, and we're if that shoots up in a kind of a really runaway the next day or two and it gets into the high 60s, uh, you know, we, we're we going to probably see a short term pullback. So, we're we, we are deaf, so you have to be cautious here, um, especially if you're thinking about adding to price. You have to wait, you have to wait. And the reason why I say that it looks like the NASDAQ has been the leader this year, year to date. And sure enough, today we've got tremendous, let me get rid of some of these other busy markings here. You can tell what's happening here. We're, we're, we're trying to, you know, here's the 50 EMA. We've stayed above it the last five days. Terrific. Because here we held it for you know, 10 to 15 days. And then it just tried to go to the 200 and came crashing back down. We're doing, we're simulating the same thing here. And we're now holding above the 50, the 14, and the 9. And we're starting to bang up against the 200. At an RSI is 65, 66.5. So actually, I've got to change that because it just updated. 66, yep. Yeah, okay, I got it right. 66.5. Very interesting. Anything over 65, I get really nervous. So we've got a lot of holdings in the high tech between some mutual funds and some other items. Not you know, it we have to be careful. It does appear that a pullback um, may be on the horizon. We talked yesterday how Microsoft came out. That was really good. Tesla came out. So some of these so-called technical side of the stocks are even when some negative, some positive, it the market is holding strength, and that's a good sign. But I think, you know, at this point, I'm going to wait for this 200 EMA before I start taking some off the top. But if we start breaking into the high 60s, I, it is probably a, a good time to take a portion of some of our money off. And it's too bad because we, we really don't want to get rid of those mutual funds in short order. Now, here, I, I don't know if we can see it. Uh, let's see if I can. Yeah. Okay. Last close of last Friday, the NASDAQ was at 58 and a half. So we've gone 58 to 66. That's a fast move. The diamonds, we went down to the mid fifties, right? 54. The spy were up into the, um, you know, uh, 63. So the spy is climbing. Everything's starting to climb. And what we have to be on the watch out is when the RSI does get elevated into these areas, it has in the past, in the bear market world, has already, has always pulled back. Now we're going to look at the short side of the NASDAQ, PSQ, right? That's the one-to-one -one PSQ daily chart. And I'm going to just quickly check this for, uh, let me get rid of this, RSI. 34.4. So that is reaching oversold. And it just nicked below the 200 EMA. And it's trying to edge towards the last low that we saw in early December. So, you know, every time it got down below this 200, it just kept, that was it. And it's the short side, meaning it had enough. It was oversold. And then the market on the long side sold off. So we're gonna be, we're on the mark look out for that. It appears that we're getting near that bottom line territory. If we look at the stochastics, it's 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Uh, 
Um, that's that's pretty low. That's pretty low. So that's short term telling us, you know, yeah, it can stay there for a little bit longer, but it's also forecasting a potential change maybe on the way. How much will it accelerate or just be, you know, a breather? Hard to say. So I want everybody to show caution. I know there's a lot of euphoria to jump in the market. There's a couple of things going on. We got the rates going to come out. If it comes out, uh, you know, mid February or wherever the next rate increase is, and it's only 0.25 is what everybody expects. I think that'd be a bullish signal to the market. What we had today, GDP was very strong. We had durable goods was way up. And what does that mean? Durable goods. That means more need for things like washing machines, stove, you know, bigger ticket items. Yeah, it had been really down on that. It was expecting around two point something, and it came in 5.6, I believe. So that's very interesting because PMI, Production Manufacturers Index, has been below 50, which is showing contraction. So I, I know there's a lot of lag. Durable goods you kind of look at. I don't put too much stock into that because, it, you know, I, I'm more of a PMI guy, but, you know, a lot of other people do, uh, economists, that is. Now, GDP was much stronger than anticipated. That's great. I know everybody's predicting slower growth, and we are seeing it in the PMI and S ISM sector. We are seeing a lot of inflationary things start to hit. Uh, you know, I, not everybody, but I know you know more in the, the northeast and the eastern side of the seaboard. They re-rated their the electric bills, the natural gas rates, they've gone way up 50, 60, 70 percent in some cases. Those bills were starting to take effect for you know November, December. And people are just starting to get, and it was a cold season, December in some places, you're just getting those bills or just got the bills and they're going and looking at something that's 60 percent higher than normal. That's going to be tough. It affects the lower income area, people who have less savings. And, you know, it's tough. And it's going to cut into spending everywhere else. So kind of seeing some different things out there. And we're going to have to wait and see. But I would be careful. I would be careful if you're going to add to it. If we look at our stock holdings, we haven't got the mutual funds yet. But, you know, TLT's flattened out. We haven't seen a lot of change there. It, you know, sometimes it opens up low and then it recovers. But it, in reality, this is the daily chart. You know, we're, and this is good. To some extent, because both, you know, the TLT is generally not a fast mover. We're kind of getting a nice plane here. The RSI on that is, is 55. So that if it continues to grow, we've got room to grow. Uh, will it get up to the 200 EMA? It might. That's a, it, you know, it might. But it's it's kind of flat. It's been flat to some extent after its brief run out, run up. It hasn't eclipsed the last high. So it's kind of a good thing because that generally doesn't move that fast. Um, the small caps continue to show strength. That RSI is in the 60s, I believe, as well, low 60s. We've got, of course, the tech sector we've already talked about, and that's doing well. well Annaly Capital, that bounces all around. It was 1% yesterday, 3.4 today. You know, that's something that anytime it gets near our, our, our buy area, you may want to add to it, depending on how much you have. That's our dividend play of 15.9%. You know, if it can bounce around within you know five to ten percent we're still going to come out positive but key is can we hold it for a year mgm another run up eight percent you know that's not a bad gain we're going to look at that as well uh and we will send out all these alerts right if if we do sell so that was uh you know not bad for you know less than a month there uh, you know the xli the industrial sector we may see that rebound we still have half of our position the stop, we, we do have changed our stop on that. But, uh, you know, if, we can, if it gets into the 99 area, um, you know, you may want to take a smaller add to your position. And, but, you know, you've got to keep your, your stops tight there. It, it, the problem is, you know, we do get one to two points movements uh, often. So we could easily get stopped out on that. But hopefully the, that industrial sector will reignite if people start lightening up on NASDAQ. All right. The... Uh, the EFA ETF, which is the European uh, ETF, that's 3.4. A lot of people saying overseas is a great place to invest now. 
7.4 for Borg Warner. That's holding in industrial play. We kind of expected that to kind of, you know, be flat, but that's that surprised us a little bit. And, it, you know, we're a little defensive here, as you can tell in our positions. Yeah, it would be great if we got had been in NVIDIA and Tesla and all that and ran up 12% in you know, the past month and a half. Terrific, you know, but I don't have the appetite to uh, tell investors at this juncture to take really growth, high growth risk because of the fact that we've run up. Yes, but we haven't. And we've run up that RSI. And I, I, I don't I don't know where that's going to take us. And I, I really do believe that uh, we'll have one more big pullback at some point in time. Not sure when and uh, and, and retest the lows, but we'll see uh, the pipeline. You know, all American oil and gas natural pipeline. That's now it was it was waning. Now back up seven point four. Anytime you get around our buy entry or below, you should add to that. Um, XLE is coming back. Crescent Point Energy CPG. This one's a tough one to hold. It's got a four point dividend. Uh, you know, we're not going to mess around with that if it if it moves. Uh, you know, JP Morgan hanging in there a little. Dis- uh, that is our. Uh, 11.5%. It's the equity premium income. It's we we don't mind seeing that flat. If it does flat and we end up, you know, halfway through the year with a five or six percent, it's a pretty safe play. Halfway through, we get two quarters of dividend and get, you know, five and a half, six percent, and the mar- and it stays around one percent gain or loss. We'll take it. Um, safe way to park money and uh, advanced uh, micro. We, uh, a chip that we, we want to take in that sector is that's rebounding. And, of course, Goodyear Tire, we got back in. That was after the news of the SEC saying they're going to, you know, they weren't happy with the recall. They're investigating. That's what pushed us out of the market originally. But we're in there with a fairly tight stop. And, of course, our mutual funds will come out today and they're in the green as well. So it's starting to, to hold our defensive slash um, dividend plays if they work to our advantage. As the market resettles here, terrific. Again, we're concerned about the NASDAQ. Uh, why? Because of the high RSI getting near overbought. Anything over 65, I consider overbought. The technicians out there would say 70 or 72. Uh, reason for that is if we take a little off and it does race up a little bit, that's not so bad. Because when it falls, as we've seen, you could wake up, it's down. Three percent end of the day is down another three percent, and it's too late to get out. We're bumping up against that two hundred EMA. That's the next test. That's what we're out high for. Repeat on the SPY. Uh, you know it, it's holding the the fifty is getting near the two hundred, but the you know that's also getting a higher ISI, and the volume is starting to decrease. Let's look at the volume on Nasdaq. Uh, um, yeah, pretty good volume today. So we're still, you know, the last two days we've had decent volume. So that's a good sign. More and more, that means money is coming in. And if we look at the diamonds, you'll see the opposite, right? The diamonds, the proxy for the Dow. The volume is kind of slowing down a little bit. RSI has come down quite a bit. It's at 56. Uh, it was up from the 53, 54 at the end of last week, but still not bad. We're not in that mid-60s to so if we can get a little bit of push up there on the XLI and some of our other stocks, that's terrific. So that's the Toomey Stock Market Report. That's the number two, mestocks.com. You can email me at info at toomeystocks.com. I know I'm getting a lot of questions about some of these, you know, high flyer growth stocks. Very good. I'm glad people are paying attention to that. There's no problem taking small positions, but you got to be careful and check the RSI in those stocks if they're elevated wait for a pullback. And if we miss the pullback, we've got other positions like our mutual funds and a few others that are going to carry the weight until the markets does give us other opportunities. And we will have an opportunity. Once the Fed puts a break on hiring, hiring <laughs> on uh, on their rate increases, then the market will be safer for us to return. However, even though inflation is flattening out month over month, it is not going away. We're way up there. Energy costs, electricity, gas is just through the roof. Even if we have milder winter going out for the northeast and the north and some of the eastern sector, 
that that will help. But when it goes to AC time, that electric bill is not coming down. That re-rate may come down in six months, but how much? Five, ten percent. So we're stuck with some pretty drastic costs out there. And if you you know had to go buy big ticket items, you know, or travel, yeah, you have to start thinking. Wait a minute. Do I really need to do this? Is it really prudent at the time? Do I have other things I need to to plan for? Uh, so you know, keep keep your powder dry. Can't hurt. All right, that's the two me stock market dot com. The number two me stocks dot com. It's Thursday. Happy trading Friday. If we have any major developments, we'll alert you via email. Thank you so much.